We believe that videos, images, words, and sounds have the absolute power to inform, inspire, and entertain. We reject indecision, confusion, and vanity, for they work against the community. We are united under the virtues of safety and knowledge. We are a training community of learners and teachers who encourage and energize each other to achieve greatness. We are pilots, videographers, photographers, freelancers, business owners, enthusiasts, experts, and apprentices. We are creators. We are the Drone You. Hey everyone and good morning and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. And you're listening to episode number 340. Thank you as always for spending a few minutes of your day with us. We appreciate it. We definitely appreciate it. And guess what, Rob? What? We've got a lot of swag that we just got in that we got to get away, give away. Is that right? That is true. From who? From where? From DJI. Why? They sent nice. us about three boxes of stuff. Oh, goody. So now if you send in a question, we have a plethora of stuff to give away. Assuming you um, like DJI. Assuming you like DJI. There's a lot of unique people out there I'm finding. You know, it's funny. Someone told me. They get really angry, I'm finding. Oh, yeah. The unique people get oh. really mad and defensive. It's interesting. It's like Android and Apple now. It's just kind of Really? Funny. Yeah, I find it... No, I, because I like Android. I don't give a crap if you like Apple. Like Apple. That's cool. Yeah. Right? Or, <laughs> you know, I think, the, I think the bigger thing is you can like whatever you want to like, but don't press your views onto other people. Yeah. If they like, like something like else, whatever. That's okay. cool, man. Enjoy your unique. Enjoy your DJI. Enjoy my Sima. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> You know that uh, we're uh, we're getting one of those Typhoon H's to test out in California. I can't stop burping. <laughs> um, but it is true. We are uh, we are going to test one against the cool. uh, Phantom Four. Very excited about that. But you know, when I think of unique and when I think of DJI, I think of Trent Sigurd, who used mm-hmm. to work for DJI, and then he worked for Unique. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's all about the people because I know that those two companies are fighting, but it really is a small industry. It's a small community, and there are some. Th- really phenomenal people in this group. Well, and I think they're both really good drones. I mean, it's just like a Ford or a Dodge, right? People like Dodge, people like Ford. We've talked about this before. They're both yeah. really good trucks. I would take either one of them, frankly. Cool. I, I would take the one with the turbo, but that's just me. But again, <laughs> you're somebody who likes, you kind of take a position and, <laughs> dang, I'm going to stick with that. And I'll, eh, whatever. Uh, I will, give me, give I me will, one of them. I will They're s- both good. That's true. I will say since I uh, I returned that F-150 that I've been trying out, um, I got back in my car. Man, it's so easy and maneuverable to move around. It just Well, oh, that's true. It. There's something to be so, said for a little smaller vehicle. That is true. Well, um, but whether you like Unique, whether you like DJI, um, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You've got to have the right drone for whatever deliverable you are trying to achieve. Um, I will say this. One video I just saw the other day that I liked was um, someone left one of the arms down on the DJI uh, Typhoon H. And they're like, look, you can fly it with five. Wait, fi- you said the DJI Typhoon or Excuse H? me, the Typhoon H. I'm waking up, okay. Rob. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I just want to the clarify. The Typhoon H. Because people will get ticked off about I know, that, Paul. I know. <laughs> we can't have And you that. know what? There have been corrections before. Um, like, for one time, I said, oh, I forget the, the military or aviation uh, word for H. And I said Hilo. And someone was like, it's not Hilo. It's you not Hilo. Go back on there and say it's not Hilo. <laughs> and I'm like... I'm like, um, I will mention it in a future podcast that I screwed up. I'm sorry. There you go. So Calm down. <laughs> so mention accomplished. Yes. Yeah, so I am sorry about that. But um, uh, someone posted a video where they were flying on just five motors out of the six. Uh-huh. And I just find it really funny because the expectations that every drone puts out there or every drone company puts out there are just so unrealistic, you know? Fly the fly the Phantom Four. It won't crash anywhere. Do you, you know the unique Typhoon H? Fly without one motor, and you'll be fine. And I met this helicopter pilot, this guy named Sean, this weekend, and um, he was like, "Oh, I've been flying helicopters for like 15 years," and uh, he had like Maverick mentality kind of. Mm-hmm. And um, and I was like, "Oh, that's cool." He's like, "You know why I want the Typhoon H?" And I'm like, "Why do you want the Typhoon H?" And he's like, because if I lose a motor, I'll be able to still fly. And I said, have you ever been through a training where you actually lose a motor? 
and you have to fly without one because I've had to do that before. Mm -hmm. Um, And I said, do you even know how to compensate for what happens? Like, you know, it's not what everyone thinks. It's a very... Uh, you know, it's an emotional experience. You have to overcome that instantly. You have yeah. to be calm, cool, and collected, and you have to know exactly what to do. Right. Um, anyway. That said, it's a nice option to have. Yes, it is. Right? But it's not... My point is this, Rob, is that, you know, everyone says, oh, it's easy to fly with yeah, five motors. I get it. No, it's not. It's not It's it, not, it's not going to come down like, oh, let's just bring it down nice right. and slow. <laughs> right. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's going to be moving around. You've got to counteract the massive amount of yaw because you're going to be yawing one way or the other because your right. bird's freaking out. So um, it is not as simple as everyone thinks. Is it totally plausible that you can land on five motors? Oh, yeah. But I think that the experience that people are expecting to have is very different. People talk about it like, oh, it's going to be so easy and I'm going to you know, land this thing fine. I've seen many people with S nine hundreds and one thousands who's who've lost a motor and still were unable to really land their bird. So it is something that is extremely difficult unless you've done it or you've done it in training. So, so what would be a good way to practice that? I mean I assume you can somehow I mean come, obviously you come, can take a motor out or come to drone you. Bring your Typhoon H and we're gonna put one motor down <laughs> and then we're gonna literally go up in the sky and be like I understand. But so is it relatively easy to to keep one motor from firing up? No, so what they did, which was actually really smart, is uh, you can do one of two things. You can leave the prop off of one motor, okay, or you can just leave the arm down. So, because on the Typhoon H, all the arms fold in and out. So right. he just left, you know, five arms up and one down, kind of okay. on the side, which I thought was actually pretty ingenious. That you know, yeah. it would still let you fire up. So I think that's really cool. I think Typhoon's made a, or excuse me, I think Unique has made a really cool product. And frankly, I'm very excited to test this. I was not happy with the old Typhoon. Um, I really think that that was, um, you know, is there just like any business, you know, you have that first step, you have that, you know, kind of qualifying that beta test, that initial product, that beta product. And I think that Typhoon was their beta product because, um, it was great, you know, again at sea level, but if you're up here at elevation where we are, it just didn't quite work. Right. So just a lot of issues. Well, it'll be fun to test and definitely fly with five motors. Definitely. But anyway, guys, um, thank you again so much for listening. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. We've got a lot of swag to give away. Um, if you want swag, if you don't want swag, just, just let us know. It's okay. Uh, anyway, guys, but today's question is brought to you by... Are you a drone pilot? Are you operating under a Section 353 exemption? Then you may be familiar with Item 27 which requires you to get a property release for every flight over property. Legal Flyer is an app for iPhone and iPad that helps you create professional property releases in less time than it takes to do a pre-flight check. You can add your pilot info, you can sign in, hand it to the property owner for their signature. But wait a second. Legal Flyer's advanced integration automatically adds latitude, longitude, and even altitude. Then add a panorama straight from the app. Everything drops into a single page PDF you can share with a single tap. It's compliance at light speed. Visit LegalFlyer.com for more information or get it straight from the App Store. Legal Flyer, property releases for professional drone pilots. Yes, hello, presidential candidate Bernie Sanders here. And what I want to know is, is I have a Phantom 4 and I was flying it and I wanted to set my return to home point. It was far from where I was actually flying because of the area I was going to be in. So what I wanted to know was, is is it possible to set my return to home position and then turn off my copter and put it back in my backpack and then go somewhere? And when I turn it on, is it going to fly back to my return to home point or will it set a whole new return to home point? So with that, I just wanted you to know that uh, if I'm elected president of the United States, all colleges are going to be free for everyone. So I just wanted to give you fair warning at the Drone U that tuition will be free if I am elected. So it brings up an interesting question, Rob. Yeah, it's a really good question, one that I've certainly wondered about. Well, so here's the thing. If you turn your drone on Mm -hmm. somewhere and you turn it off... 
that home point doesn't matter anymore. So it gets wiped clean. Wiped clean. All right. Yeah. And so now, you can, essentially, you can't do what he's suggesting he would like to do. I think the better way to do what he would like to do is turn the drone on. If he wants that home point, turn the drone on, take off from that home point. Okay. Um, but also, you can set dynamic home points in the app. So, I mean, you can say, set my controller to return to home. It's really good for boating. Um, sometime, I've had issues sometimes with that because uh, I'll be in a many areas where I don't have GPS through my phone or my tablet or okay. anything. So I, I don't trust that. Um, that's just a personal preference. It has nothing to say about the software. It has nothing to say about the app. It's just a personal preference. Um, but you know, you can, let's say you're flying, let's say you're flying in Austin, right? Lake Travis, you know, everyone knows Lake Travis kind of goes through the middle of Austin mm -hmm. and they've got a bunch of parks, uh, that are scattered along the, the shoreline essentially. Right. And a lot of people are fl afraid to fly around boats because when they lose uh, their battery or if they left smart battery on, or smart go home on, excuse me, mm -hmm. um, their drone will say, hey, we took off way over there down the river, and now we're way over here, and you've used up a lot of battery power, and now I'm going to fly home. Right. So, Which is what he sounds like he was wanting to happen. Yeah, but for me, here's the thing, is that if you, let's say you start here, right? Yeah. And then you go a mile down the river... Uh, and you have smart go home on, which means that the drone is measuring the amount of battery power you've used right. and how much you have available. All of a sudden, your drone is going to start flying home. Right. And it's going to land where? In the water. That's right. Because the boat's no longer there. That's right. So don't do that. So turn <laughs> smart go home off, number one. Um, number two, I what I do when I'm flying around boats is I set my remote loss signal to hover. Okay. So when I lose a signal, it just hovers in place. It doesn't move. Um, that's really important because you don't want to hit another boat. You don't want to hit something sure. else. Um, now, that being said, you can go in the app and set your home point to be one of those grassy knolls that say, you know that we're starting off here and we're flying over to here and that maybe somewhere down the river over here, you're going to lose battery power. You can set, let's say your arm is the park, and be like, boom, we're going to land right there okay. if I have a remote loss signal or the battery dies. Now, what I, if you come to train with me, and like we said, that big subject tracking training is coming up here in June, I, you know, I will teach you very specific routines and habits that you'll never have to worry about issues like that mm -hmm. um, because you're monitoring very specific points and very specific data right. to ensure that you don't have that problem. You're doing tests with your drone as soon as you take off to ensure that you're not going to have certain problems. I've seen so many drones drop in the water from new people and I actually get a rise out of it. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> so. Well, certainly we would feel bad for that person, but the point is it could have been avoided. Yes, and that's why I laugh. Planning because and understanding. It, it, I laugh because many people, like myself included, our children, and we get really <laughs> excited. We get really, really excited, and we don't always read the instructions or get training, and we just go for it. We're yeah. all guilty of it. I know Rob is too. I don't know with what, but I'm sure he is. Oh yeah, well. So back I in mean, the day. even with my girlfriend, you know, in her new ring, right? She like she dropped she dropped uh -oh. one little diamond out of it this weekend, and last night she had to go to Zales to go get it fixed, like instantly. And they didn't have it at the near one, so she drove like fifty. Fifty miles just to go get it fixed. Can you talk about a little bit excited and giddy, like you know? It was, so, that's very important to her. Yes, so that's yes. a good thing. Yes, it is. So I'd be worried if she said, "Eh." <laughs> <laughs> luckily for me, that wasn't the case. Yeah, yes, so, very lucky for you. Um, but anyway, going back to the point of the question, no, you cannot uh, do what you want to do with. Turn the drone on, set a home point, turn it off, go to a new location. Uh, if you want to do that, leave the drone on, and you can physically go to another location. Um, you'd be surprised. You won't use up very much uh, battery power at all because when the motors are not loaded, which means there's not amperage pulling through them, right. uh, you're really not pulling any power or juice out of the battery. It's just so minimal. But to um, clarify, he could, in, a, in essence, do what he's talking about just by knowing where he would want that home point to be and using the app to set it yes. later or yes. when he gets to wherever he's going. Yes, you can okay. use the app to set what's called a dynamic home point. Okay. So you can totally do that. Um, but again, uh, if you are... Uh, you see, I, I, I question this because sometimes people's motives could be 
questionable, you know, like, oh, no, people are coming to question me about my drone. Dynamic home point, go. And then, <laughs> and then they well, have someone waiting at that home point to pick their drone up, and they just cruise back to the car and leave. I will I, say Glenn's a solid drone you member. He is. I don't believe that's his motivation <laughs> I don't think or it his is intent. <laughs> but I could see, I mean, I hadn't yeah. thought about that. But I just I wanted to point that out. Yeah, I just wanted to point that out because, yeah. you know. Don't do that. No, don't do that. <laughs> but anyway, guys. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, if you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. Uh, if you're looking to learn more about flying drones, you want to be a little bit more confident and you want to learn the tips, tricks, and hacks to be a much better drone pilot than a lot of the other guys out there. And that's the thing. T- or I almost called you Tim. Rob. Uh, bald guy. One of the bald guys. Um, there are so many wannabes out there that will give you bad information on Facebook. I, I know so many of them. I'm not going to say their names. It's not worth it. But you need to be very careful where you get your information from because there's so much bad information out there. It's insane. Anyway. And by the way, that could be people that are intending to do good things. They just don't know. Well, it's people. They're not trying to be malicious necessarily. No, they they just don't know what they don't know. Uh, And I'm talking about the people that post 15, 15, you know, pictures on top of one HDR and the DJI Phantom 4 groups, but they couldn't tell you or explain the difference between ferromagnetic interference and magnetic interference. So, right. you know, it's just like, uh, eee. so what if I do this? Will my drone crash? Oh, no, it'll be okay. Well, your source of information, which has always been the case, but is even more so now because there's so much of it, is critically important. It is. Obviously. It is, it so, is. But things are ever changing. I mean, we're getting very close to June. Can you believe that? No. I know. It, it, just, it feels like it's literally nuts. last week it was January. It's so. nuts. Anyway, guys, well, that's going to do it for us today. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com, upload that question. And again, we are not always right ourselves. Sometimes I get the morning blues, and sometimes I mistake helo for other words. Anyway, I just wanted yeah. to say, guys, we are all human, um, and everyone makes mistakes. And we love to help, and we will do everything to make it right. I think that's the difference here at Drone U than other places, is that no matter what, we'll do what we can to make it right. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. And this is Ask Drone U. We believe that videos, images, words, and sounds have the absolute power to inform, inspire, and entertain. We reject indecision, confusion, and vanity but they work against the community. We are united under the virtues of safety and knowledge. We are a training community of learners and teachers who encourage and energize each other to achieve greatness. We are pilots, videographers, photographers, freelancers, business owners, enthusiasts, experts, and apprentices. We are creators. We are the Drone Youth.